everybody. It has been just the worst week ever <laughs> with, uh, we had to take our first child to get stitches. Our, our youngest toddler ended up getting stitches right by her eye. Uh, my husband has been sick. I'm starting to get a throat sick. Uh, we found out we're going to have to get orthodontics for my oldest kid. And, of course, the inaugurations today. So, <laughs> I am just trying to keep in my happy place. I do have my Keep Calm and Start a Revolution shirt I got on in Boston uh, wearing. And I'm, of course, in black because I'm, uh, yeah, dealing with things as best I can. Um, so, today I am kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about why I'm not going to do the Diversathon this spring or this winter, I guess. And this is kind of a funny thing because I loved the Diversathon I did last fall. It was a great reading month for me and I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it. Um, last year I made a commitment to try and up at least to half uh, the authors I read that were of minorities, of different um, sexual orientations, uh, different countries, different viewpoints, different everything. And it was beautiful year of reading for me. I really got a lot. I learned a lot. I feel like I really deepened my understanding of different demographics that I'm a part of. Um, and I really recommend doing that. However, I just need a break. I need to step back and rest a tiny bit. Um, I'm still reading a couple of challenging books. Men We Reaped is, is going really well. Um, but I just, right now, with everything going on, to stay sane, I can't do a whole week of reading books to challenge me. Now, I, I have my stack all ready to go from the library in February for reading for Black History Month. I'm really excited about, about that stack. Um, but next week, <laughs> right after the inauguration, I am doing self-care, not self-comfort, but self-care. And self-care, I've talked about a little bit before, uh, is just the idea of doing things that are beneficial to your soul, um, that aren't like the sugary sweets that we just stuff in to, to, to numb the pain. I'm trying to kind of feed my soul in good ways and not just numb the pain. I'm doing more cuddling. I'm working on an art project with um, the Maya Angelou poem, Still I Rise. Um, I might read some more Emily Dickinson and I got a really fun stack of books from the library I wanted to show you. Uh, today with my kids for school, uh, we read some Langston Hughes poetry. Uh, I read a picture book about immigration, which I'll actually show you. The, this is the Langston Hughes, I Too Am America. Um, beautiful, beautiful illustrated book. Um, we also read Mama's Nightingale, a story about immigration and separation, uh, which I cried in. Because it, it brought me back to um, when my nephew was young uh, and we were not sure if my brother-in-law was going to get to be with us. Um, so I am doing my part for social justice and teaching my kids and talking about how we need to write letters. And right now they're actually working on a, a writing project about what they think a good president should look like. But this afternoon we are planning on watching a DVD of Midsummer Night's Dream. And I just think it'll be great to just sit and cuddle and laugh. We have people coming for dinner. We're going to be having blackout cake. <laughs> um, and I think it's just really important to try and, um, yeah, feed your soul when it's, it's dark and dreary. <laughs> Whether it's because stitches or politics or financial troubles or, yeah, we also went over our budget. It's We're fine, but it's just one of those fun things we do every year and it just happened to happen on this week of course <laughs> the budget for the year um so I want to kind of show you the stack I got from the library this is also just a good good reminder that sometimes it's good to just browse your library and not just get your recommendations from Goodreads or from BookTube sometimes it's good to just meander around because you find a lot of good things that I've never seen before and I wouldn't have ran into if I didn't just take my kids to, <laughs> to meander the, the stacks so that said there are a couple things and I'll probably review them um, next week at the end of the month this is a bunch of pretty things I did not buy by Sarah Lazarovic 
Um, and it's just, a, it's very short. I read it last night. Beautiful illustrations. Um, but she's just talking about minimalism, being content with what you have, um, how to make better consumer decisions. And it was a fun, quick read. Um, it fed my soul. So that was the first one. If you've not, yeah, just a really quick little book. If you can find it at your library, great. <laughs> This one I read earlier this week, Knives and Ink, Chefs and the Stories Behind Their Tattoos. I'm considering getting my first tattoo next year, actually. Or not next year, because um, it's 2017, in a couple months. So I thought this would be kind of a fun read that I found. Um, my husband and I are planning on going to New York for the first time. So I got All the Buildings in New York. Again, just a quick illustrated book. And then New York a mod portrait of the city. This is actually written um, and illustrated by some Europeans. Uh, I don't remember what country they're from, but it's just really cool illustrations. You can kind of see, um, yeah, with some little factoids. Uh, so I thought it was kind of cool to get in the mood. I picked up Neil Gaiman's Make Good Art speech. You can actually see Fantastic Mistakes is the alternate title. Um, and it's just one of his TED Talks in a little book form. Birding for the Curious. Again, I just got drawn in by the illustrations. Can I see? Oh. Now I'm not showing you any illustrations. There we go. Um, yeah. Hamilton the Revolution. My husband and I decided to spring for tickets later this year to go see in Chicago. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about, we have been binge listening to Hamilton, especially the mixtape. So it's been fun to kind of read the lyrics that I miss when they're going so fast they're talking, uh, and also the stories behind it. This one's really cool. The Joy of Art. I, I told you one of my goals for the year is to read more about art history and art techniques. And look at this, just it's beautiful. Different renditions of... Uh, famous pictures as well as art supplies, techniques. I'm really excited about just pouring over this and savoring it and feeding my soul. Maybe learning a few things. And the final one I got that's just kind of fun is Thunder and Lightning, Weather Past, Present, and Future. And it's by Lauren Redness. And she apparently actually did another illustrated biography of Marie Curie. So I'm excited about picking that up. But look at these. Oh illustrations they're just so pretty and I am any nonfiction book I can find that has beautiful illustrations like the the Julia Rothman books and farm anatomy nature anatomy any of these like I am just adoring graphic biographies and science books because they feed my love of nonfiction along with my aesthetic for beauty and I'm just yeah using it to to self-care right now. As you can see, I mean, my face is breaking out. I'm just, <laughs> it has been the roughest week. So that said, I would love to hear what you're doing for self-care uh, through harder times, whether it's just the weather is getting you down or anything is getting you down. Um, sometimes it's okay to say, no, I don't need to do the Diversathon next week. I can read diversely anytime I want, <laughs> but it's good to make choices based on what you need and not what you think you should do. So that is my permission slip for you to read what you want to read or what you need to read. Don't just do what everybody else is doing, even if it's really fun sometimes. Sometimes your soul needs something else and that's okay. So I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> and again, yes, thank you for indulging my mess because that's where we are right now. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.